breakfast. So these are obviously grapes, and I talked to my dad, and I asked him if I could eat all of them, but he said he wants some too, so I'll just eat enough and leave him a little bit. I feel like I'll probably be just sort of grazing today, because I'm not really doing anything. I might go for a run or something, uh, but I am going to cook my parents' dinner later, and I'm going to show you everything. What's it going to be? Shh, it's going to be a secret. It's going to be a surprise. But uh, last night I watched Cowspiracy, and I don't even know what to think anymore. <laughs> That's, it's honestly the most eye-opening documentary I have ever seen. I mean, Earthlings was pretty eye-opening, but this is just, it's crazy. I mean, especially when I learned about the Patriot Act and the uh, food disparagement law, basically saying, if you tell 100% the truth, and that truth makes people eat less animal products, and by eating less animal products, the meat and dairy industry begins to lose money, you would be found guilty in the court of law under the Patriot Act and the food disparagement laws. Basically, by making them lose profits, you would be found guilty. That's some fucked up shit. America is fucked up. This is the quickest way that I've found to zero out your scale so you're weighing everything and you don't want to weigh the bowl. So I just put the bowl on here while I turn on scale and it zeroes it out to zero grams and then you just add in all this rice and beans. I already added it to my fitness pail and a recipe. And you get uh, 445 grams. And say say you didn't eat it all, then you just weigh again what you didn't eat, and then you just subtract it, and there you go. Just found these blueberries in the fridge. No one's even touched them, so I would hate to see them go bad, especially in the winter. So I'm about to eat them all. So I just got another snack. I uh, just cut up this butternut squash. And the reason I cut it right there, if you'll notice, is right when uh, the, where the seeds would be, where that starts, because. These tend to cook a little bit faster because they are hollow, and these ones tend to cook a little bit longer because they're not so hollow. So that's why I cut them right there, so be sure to do that when you cook your butternut squash. These are all the ingredients you're going to need for the first part of tonight's dinner, which is tomato basil bread. Uh, so these are all the ingredients that you really need for the bread. Just uh, yeast, flour, applesauce to take the place of oil, and some warm water. Uh, because you're using yeast, you want to use warm water, not cold, not hot. Uh, so that would just make bread. If you only have these ingredients, that's cool. You could totally do that. It won't taste nearly as good as tomato basil bread. So if you want to make tomato basil bread, you're going to need oregano. Uh, you could use salt. I'm using seasoned salt. I'm, the t I'm all about taste. It's going to taste better. So we've got tomato paste for the tomato basil, obviously. Basil. Nutritional yeast in place of Parmesan cheese. And a little bit of sugar. Now you just have to flour the table or whatever sort of surface that you're using. This is not quite the consistency that I need, so I am going to add a little bit more flour. I added uh, four cups of flour so far, so all you got to do is just, just add, I would say if you're going to do the double batch like me, add four cups of flour and then just add flour as needed until you get a sort of firm dough. Alright, so it's, it's firm enough, so I'm going to put it onto the counter now, and so I'm just going to pour the excess flour out. And now I'm just going to knead it and continue adding flour until I get the consistency that I really want. Alright, so this is basically the consistency that I want. Um, last time I made this, there was a bunch of, like, see all these cracks in here? I don't, I don't know exactly how to get rid of those. So, uh, if you want to leave in the comment in the, in the description, uh, to tell me how to get rid of those cracks, I would love to know how, because I would love to make it more presentable. It tastes great, but, uh, the cracks could, uh, I could do without the cracks, I guess. Alright, so I have reflowered the table, and I'm going to put this dough right there on top of the flour so it doesn't stick when I take it off. I'm just going to cover it with this warm, uh, I just uh, put warm water on the paper towel, squeeze it out so the bread doesn't soak up too much water, and then I just put it on there and it's going to rise for about 50 minutes. If you want to take this off about halfway through, get some more warm water because it will get a little bit cooler. Uh, you just want to keep this bread warm 
Uh, so just let it rise for about 50 minutes and then come back to it. Okay, so now it's been about 50 minutes, so then all you gotta do is re-put on a little bit of flour because uh, the water will soak into here, so you're going to need to re-flour it. I think that's a technical term. So just, then you just gotta basically punch it, knead it, and kick it, and throw it all over the place until uh, you get to the consistency that you want, and then you just chuck it in the oven. So these are all the ingredients you're going to need for chili. Kind of a lot, uh, but chili always needs a lot. So uh, you've got potatoes, sweet potatoes is what I'm using, crushed tomatoes, diced tomatoes, a bunch of seasonings, uh, a bunch of beans. i got lentils, cannellini beans, black beans, red kidney beans, some quinoa. I'm probably going to use this. Uh, we got it's, it's this really cool thing. It's got like garlic, all of them are garlic. <laughs> so it's just gar different types of garlic. I'm probably going to use this one. Uh, but you can use whatever you want, and I just got some frozen vegetables over here and some chopped dried onions. I mean, if you want to use actual corn, actual peas, uh, some actual onions, actual tomatoes, that would be so much better. But I'm going for convenience right now, and uh, you can too. Or, you, you can. You can too. Oh, and uh, 15 ounces of oil-free tomato sauce. Don't forget that. Alright, so now we have the oven set to 375. We're going to put the tomato and basil bread in for, uh, I don't know, 45, 50 minutes. And now what I'm doing is going to put stuff in for the chili. And uh, let's see, I got crushed tomatoes, 28 ounces. Just throwing it all in. Uh, I got 28 ounces of diced tomatoes, throwing that in with the juice, because it says add water in the recipe. But uh, I'd rather just use tomato juice. I got the four cans of beans going in like that got two sweet potatoes uh, I'll get the rest out after uh, oh one 15 ounce can of tomato sauce it's oil free awesome stuff from all these got quinoa I'll scrape the rest out not a lot left after that and uh, then I'm just going to throw in the Tex-Mex. You know, I might just like finish that off. Uh, garlic. Hopefully it's not too garlicky. But uh, that, that's pretty much it. You just saw me put together a chili. And it's very, very quick. Um, all you gotta do is stir it up. And uh, if it's too liquidy, then just add some thickeners. Like we got some tomato paste over here. If it's too thick, just add some water, more tomato juice, whatever. And then... It's chili. Really simple. JK! I forgot some stuff. So uh, over here I got the uh, frozen vegetables. Just gonna throw this in here. And then um, uh, some seasoned salt. Uh, good. That's good. And I think, I think that's it this time. So uh, hopefully you guys will see the finished product next. I'm just going to leave it on here. Let it simmer for I think like 30 minutes. <laughs> Okay, I still forgot stuff, so I'm throwing in some dehydrated onions, and I already threw in a little bit of cumin, and uh, like I said, I just, I'm just i still doctoring it up as I go. You guys are seeing it all in real time. This is the aftermath. I also made some potato wedges, but I didn't bother to show you the recipe because I literally just chopped them up and threw them in the oven. Uh, this is how much chili is left. We had chili up to like here, and now it's like halfway gone. Uh, we had... A lot of this tomato basil bread came out to like here before we ate a lot of it. And that's the aftermath. I ate so much. I didn't, uh, I just kept going back for like seconds and thirds and fourths. So I didn't even bother uh, making a video or taking pictures. But uh, I weighed everything out though. So you guys will see in my chronometer analysis exactly how much I ate. So I started the day off using my fitness bell. I was like, ah, fuck it. I like chronometer better anyway. It's easier to do these analyses on here anyway, so you can see it on the laptop. So, uh, yeah, recap, I just had grapes, and I had uh, some cooked food before four because I like to live dangerously, mustard hot sauce, had some blueberries, squash, and then I had two slices of that tomato basil bread, some uh, potato wedges with some ketchup, and uh, over a kilogram of chili. So that that's one thing I really love about a vegan diet is that a vegan diet is great for people who love to eat because your food is generally lower in calories, so in order to make up for that, you need to eat more. I know, it's a chore, you know, who wants to eat more? <sighs> Jeez, eat more and not weigh so much? I don't know who wants that. So uh, I had around 3,000 calories today, 
81% from carbs, 12.9% from protein, and 5% from fat, even though I'm trying to remyelinate my sheath. A little bit of fat really goes a long way. You really don't need that much fat in order to remyelinate anything. So if anyone should be eating more fat, it should be me, right? Well, you know what? That's more than enough. 19.3 grams in a day. Uh, so moving on, let's see. Oh, you know, you really you just can't get enough of B vitamins on a vegan diet. I even got B12 today from uh, the it's from the nutritional yeast. It's fortified, and a lot of people will be kind of hypocritical about uh, getting fortified sources as a vegan because a lot of sources from omnivorous food is fortified. Most bread is fortified. Most cereals are fortified. Pretty much anything that has grains in it is fortified. Uh, pretty much good on everything. Uh, vitamin D, you know, you get that from the sun, nothing to worry about. Definitely can't get enough calcium on a vegan diet, huh? Oh, uh, I'm going to be anemic in a little bit. I mean, I only got like six times the daily value. Jeez. Zinc, cannot get enough zinc. Oh my God, selenium, I'm like, uh, almost, I'm like borderline death. I'm pretty much cheating death right now with all these micronutrient values. I mean, I'm just going to die of like deficiency especially vitamin A. I mean, I only got like almost 4,000% of my daily value. I mean, I'm going to get vitamin A toxicity, actually. Oh, it's crazy, crazy, crazy. Let's see, fiber, 125 grams, way more than I'm supposed to, but I'm used to it now. So first couple days of being vegan, if you just jump right into it, you may shit your brains out. I did. I shat like 12 times the first day I went vegan, or the first couple days, uh, just because I, I wasn't used to it. You know, your body's got to adjust. It adjusts over. It took me about a week, and then I was back to my normal shitting schedule. But uh, now my uh, my, digest- my digestive tract is squeaky clean. So uh, moving on to protein. All right, I wanted to touch on this a little bit because I got almost 120 grams of protein, 188% of my daily value. And I just wanted to jump on over to the uh, American College of Sports Medicine website where this, I mean, this, honestly, I think this is a high recommendation. Uh, This is for strength athletes, people like power lifters. Uh, They say you should get 1.7 grams per per kilogram a day of protein. And honestly, I think that's a bit high, but, you know, let's just go with that. So 100, or 1.7, that's that's the high estimate, right? So let's go with the high estimate over here. Pull out the old calculator. I weigh 68 kilograms, so we'll just do 68 times 1... 0.7 0.7 equals 115.6. So I'm getting more than what I need to for a very high estimate. I'm not necess- I'm really not a power lifter. I lift like three days a week, uh, and I'm getting four grams more than what someone who lifts a lot would need. So trust me when I say a vegan diet will give you more than enough. Uh, if you doubt that, go check out Jason Blaha's channel at uh, Juggernaut Fitness. I think it's Juggernaut Fitness TV maybe, but... I just want to show you guys exactly what I ate today. These are all the macronutrients, micronutrients. If you want to look at anything, feel free to pause. Oh, the uh, trans fat. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but corn is actually a naturally occurring uh, trans fat. Don't worry about it. You're going to be fine. And uh, that's what I ate today. That's all the breakdown. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, hopefully I'll see you next time.